Hey guys, Jeff, I'm back. Um, just thought I'd do another uh, weekly stack stuff I've been listening to for the last uh, week or so. So, uh, yeah, let's just jump right in. Um, yeah, sorry, this video's a little grainy. The lighting's not the greatest down here in the basement, but uh, yeah, maybe I'll find a clip on lamp or something next time. Can be bothered to set up my phone <laughs> to use a laptop. Okay. Well, here's what I was listening to uh, last night. Uh, John Tran, uh, John Coltrane's uh, transition. This is a, actually a really good album. Uh, this is right between um, this is original pressing. I believe it's U.S. original pressing. Actually, I'm pretty sure it is. I picked this up in Japan. Really, uh, pretty clean. So gatefold. Um, this was uh, released. Uh, Posthumous, posthumously, I can never say that, posthumously, um, after his death. So this, uh, it was actually recorded for the liner notes, or the, uh, uh, the gatefold in there. It's recorded in 65, which would put it right between um, A Love Supreme and, um, oh shoot, what was that called? Um, when he started really getting free jazzy, uh, Asc Ascension. So, yeah, so, right there on the impulse. And it's original sleeve, pretty clean. So, really getting into the, the modal stuff. It's got some notes from his uh, wife Alice. Well, I don't think she appears on here, though. But um, let's see McCoy Tyner on piano, uh, Elvin Jones on drums, and Jimmy Garrison on bass. Really good uh, in his uh, more experimental vein of things. Now this one, uh, this is probably my favorite uh, Japanese movie. Sorry, to take it out of the shrimp photos. So uh, this is a Japanese movie by the name of House. If you've never seen this, yeah, I, very very good. It's uh, probably my favorite Japanese movie. It's really weird, trippy. Good Halloween movie if you've never seen it. Uh, I wouldn't go so far as to call it like a scary movie or anything. It's very trippy, psychedelic. Um, I guess it came out in 77 because that's when the, uh, the record says right there. Um, this is actually a promo copy. It's got the, the punch out. It's got all the original stuff in it. So Japanese promo copy. See the promo stamp on it. So, I don't know, I was expecting the, the soundtrack to be a little more psychedelic than it was. It's, it falls a lot more into the fusion side. There's one blues song on here, uh, a lot of creepy piano music. Uh, so, but there was, a, in the actual movie, there was some really trippy uh, kind of psychedelic stuff in there. There's like one maybe Sunshine Poppy song and some like a ballad or two on here. I uh, just gave it a listen to this morning, finally. Um, so, unfortunately, like, yeah, my favorite song didn't make it to the soundtrack disc, but glad to have this. It's my, yeah, my favorite movie, and I picked this up uh, relatively cheap. That's like 12 bucks, I think. Promo, really clean promo copy. Uh, right before I left, this was the last record I bought in Japan. But, uh, yeah, a little disappointed that my favorite song didn't make it on here, but it's glad to have this. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll give it another spin or not, or it might just end up on a wall somewhere later framed. It's a really cool movie poster on there. All right, uh, moving along. So what do you guys know? Uh, Vanilla Fudge, uh, I believe this is a stereo copy. I think it's missing the original inner sleeve. I'm not sure. I think this is the first press. Uh, so other than a few like little short uh, ditties on here, it's all covers. And uh, yeah. Let's see, where is that guy? Oh, there he is. Doesn't that look like Steve Carlson? Hey, Steve. <laughs> Had an alter ego there. Uh, yeah, so Ticket to Ride, very uh, unique uh, kind of psyche version. Curtis Mayfield's uh, People Get Ready, which is, yeah, it's okay. Uh, she's Not There, very good copy, or very good uh, version, rather. Uh, Bang Bang, so old uh, Sunny Bono song, uh, very good there. Uh, Keep Me Hanging Out is probably the highlight, but yeah, Eleanor Rigby, their version is quite uh, good too. But yeah, I really like, yeah, You Keep Me Hanging On and uh, 
their version of uh, She's Not There, especially. But, yeah. Read album if you see it. I don't think it goes for much. I think I, um, I might try to find a slightly cleaner copy. I thought this was a really clean copy. It has some crackly, so I might be able to be able to clean up a little more than I did. But it's not, it's not a very good listener copy, not a scratch on it. It's very clean. So, yeah, maybe it's just a matter of doing it with deeper clean. Ah, uh, sleep on backwards. But uh, here, this is the uh, Ha La La's uh, debut album. On the sleeve itself. So, yeah. yeah. I guess this fall into like the garage rock revival. Uh, this one, I think, was 2012, if I'm not mistaken. Um, nice thick vinyl. Yeah, replace the sleeve on there. It's not original, but uh, you can see that. The clone has a, a little insert. Nothing spectacular on the. On the Packaging, but yeah, this is a gorgeous album cover photo. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. The first album, this one is quite good. Uh, they have two other albums out this. I'm pretty sure I got the second one at some point, but yeah, it was, yeah it's okay. And then the third one, I don't know if I didn't really gave it a proper listen. But yeah, the first album is absolutely amazing if you're into like that kind of garage y. Uh, I don't know if I'd go as far as call it psych, but it's it's kind of it's it's in that vein, I guess. So um, yeah. So that's if you don't have if you've never heard this, Alalaz. Maybe zoom it in out. That's worth a listen. Or two or three. That's Really good album for that year. Uh, here, another one that was looked better in the store. But you know this one, Rolling Stones, Let It Bleed, uh, First Press US. Original sleeve in there, but yeah, London label in the states. This is pretty sure stereo. Yeah, stereo. So, um, let's see, Gimme Shelter, most notably on here. Can't always get what you want. Um, those two of my favorites on there. Love and Bane, of course, Monkey Man, a lot of good stuff on here. Maybe my favorite stones, it's definitely one of them. Yeah, definitely need a cleaner copy. That Again, it might clean up a bit, but it's got some serious cracklies. It looked a lot better in the store than it actually is. Okay. This one. This is a great, great album if you've never heard it. Yeah, you can see that. Yeah, Amazon, Amazon. They did that. So, yeah, this was, uh, I think, Amazon Warehouse. Um, I, I guess it's still in print. I thought it was out of print, so I ordered the warehouse copy. And the warehouse copy, uh, not only is it's warped slightly, I, I think I could fix that. But, uh, yeah, they decided it was a good idea to use some uh, packing tape to tape it back together. Yeah, but um, this is Me Without You. It's all one word. Uh, if you've never heard this album, it's, I think it's called Brothers and Sisters or something like that. Yeah, I think it's called Brothers and Sisters. Oh, Brother, Sister. Yeah, there you are. So it's got, the, from one of the songs on here, it's got the sun and the moon, I guess. And, uh, yes, this particular one's on a, a blue vinyl, but it seems like they're repressing in a different color, like, every six months or so. It's, yeah, I was kind of under the impression this was going out of print, so I got the warehouse one, but when I actually had time to spin it and take a look at the vinyl, uh, it's, Amazon really botched this one. But Yeah, I'll probably be sitting it under some uh, heavy uh, books or records or something. Yeah, it's a... Uh, Kind of a poster slash lyric sheet. So, excellent, excellent album. Um, kind of uh, what's well, post punk, uh, hardcore? I don't know what to call it. Art rock, somewhere in that vein. It's hard, to, hard to describe. But uh, yeah, the, I don't know. I could, I could see where like maybe the the vocals could be uh, 
not everyone's cup of tea, it's, but it, the artistry comes out. Okay, so next one, uh, this is my shirt. Got Stooges. Uh, this is, uh, I think it's, this is a Japanese version. I think they had a U.S. press as well. So this is a Stooges, um, featuring Iggy Pop. No fun. So what this is, I thought it might be a live album when I first picked it up, but it's not. Um, it's a comp of uh, the first two albums. And it's actually a really good pressing as well. Some of the best. It's a really clean pressing. This particular one, uh, you'll see it's pretty much like the best songs off the first two albums. So you got 1969, A Real Cold Time, No Fun, and Dirt. Love Dirt. Then on the second size, Down on the Street, Loose, TDI, I Want to Be Your Dog, in 1970. So this it's got the uh, Electro with the Butterfly and has a Japanese insert in this case. I'm going to fold it. it got lyrics on one side and like a biography or something going on on the second side. Too much Japanese for me to really dig into. I don't care. Yeah, really good comp, really clean if you see a Japanese pressing. <clears throat> very good uh, yeah, very good pressing. I think that's the first version. Okay, I'm not gonna bother taking this one out of the shrink, um, out of the, the baggie because it's in shrink. It's gonna be just as glary. Uh this is a fifty cent find recently. One of uh Cammy Wynette's uh early seventies albums. It's a very good one. It's got the hype sticker on there still, as you see. So it's got the shrink. So very, so yeah, just picking up some country stuff here and there. It's got the original insert and yeah, if you like that, uh, that period of country, is it's a good album. I'm kind of uh, branching out a bit on, into the countryside. So you can generally get it pretty cheap in this area. This area, you can get a spattering of uh, country stuff shows up in the bargain bins, and a lot of folk. So I've been buying a lot of folk uh, lately. So you'll probably see that spattered uh, throughout my videos. Okay, this one, uh, probably know it. Concrete Blonde's uh, Bloodletting. This is the recent repress from maybe a couple years ago on IRS. IRS always has labels, except for, I never cared for that first early uh, Rainbow one. But yeah, their 80s labels and so on. It's pretty cool. So this one's got uh, with Joey, um, Caroline, most notably, I'd say. But, uh, and Tomorrow, Wendy, always like that song. Great, great album. Um, eh, I guess they kind of fell into that gothy sound. But uh, post-punk, uh, gothy stuff. Uh, very good album. If you've never heard it, it's worth a listen. It's one of the... I, would consider it one of the, uh, the pinnacle uh, 90s albums. Not the original. This is a 2017 repress on Capitol slash IRS. I can't remember the year the original came out, but I'd say it's early 90s. Okay. Here. Um, wow, this is going to be shiny no matter what. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. This one's all right. This one shows up on the DC sometimes. That's the uh, Jazz Composers Orchestra with uh, Cecil Ter Taylor, Don Cherry, and uh, Thoreau Sanders, most notably, and Michael Mantler. I hope that's not reversed for you guys. Yeah, gatefold version. I've seen this also as a box set. Uh, this, I believe, is a U.S. version. I picked it up in Japan. Very minty. If you're, yeah, if you know those artists, you pretty much know what to expect. Uh, Little more, uh, less free jazzy, I suppose, but still in the experimental vein. Very much worth a listen. This guy, no, uh, this has been shown in the past. I saw like a really minty copy of their, uh, I think it's their third album after they came out after this. Well, recently I kind of regret not getting it. It was like four bucks in the shrink, but maybe if I'm up that way, I'll pick it up. They had a few copies there. So Electric Flags, a uh, long time coming. Apparently, uh, yeah, it was quite the, the party album at the time. This was like 69-ish. 
No, anyway, this is a uh, original pressing on Columbia, U.S. The original inner sleeve. Just an original pressing, but anyway, yeah, this this one plays really nicely. But apparently, it's one of those albums that was kind of a party album, and it's really hard to find a really clean copy. So this one hardly has any pops and clicks. So that's always a plus. So very um, yeah. Let's see, like uh, this one, it's kind of uh, it's like psych elements. Uh, some uh. Since I really gave this listen, but uh, it's been like a week <laughs> since the last time. Um, kind of, I don't know, funkish. I don't know. Michael Bloomfield on here, of course, on guitar. Uh, so you know, it's good. Buddy Miles on drums, but uh, yeah, it's kind of yeah funky and some psych elements. So uh, you can, as you can see from the call. Cover, um, I don't know, yeah, it's funk, I guess. I, I don't know, I can't remember. It's, a, it's definitely worth a listen. Uh, I can see it, I don't think it's terribly expensive when you find it. Yep, yeah, you know this one. <laughs> On the Clean American Pie. Um, it's, it's a decent album, you can get it cheap. But, uh, yeah, most notably, uh, pedal track. Oh, uh, this is a really good one. Uh, to the string, so uh, yeah, it's gonna be glary no matter what. Wooden ships, uh, and the uh, album title is V, which I believe is their fifth album. Um, I don't think it's particular, this particular one is a limited edition, but I, I think it's still in print on uh, Thrill Jockey. Yeah. Title that's the title V, as in five, I believe. And this particular one's like a kind of neat splatter vinyl, if that's your thing. Personally, I prefer black because you can see the scratches. But, uh, yeah, excellent, excellent uh, modern psych album. Uh, not, not too heavy, not too light. There we go. So, wooden ships, note the odd spell in there. It's not reversed, but I don't care if it is. Okay, uh, I can't remember if I showed this last week or not, but, um, uh, might have, I can't remember. Yeah, so, yeah, this is, um, Acid Mother's Temple. Uh, this is, I think, their 20, one of their 2016 albums. I don't think they press that many when they do them, so they always pick them up. Uh, ooh, yeah. definitely a top 10, uh, live band for me. Amazing, amazing. They do the, uh, the old Jello uh, projector and all that. The crazy uh, Japanese psych band. Acid Mother Temple and Melting Paradiso in this case. Uh, it's been ongoing since the early 90s. They've had a lot of lineups. Uh, they cross pollinate a bit with um, other Japanese bands in a similar vein, like Ruins. Okay, here's another Japanese one coming up. Uh, Probably not everyone's cup of tea, but I really like this album. Awesome artwork. This is uh, Kazumi Band. So with uh, Kazumi Watanabe. And you'll notice there's another very famous artist on there. That's focusing. Some of you guys might know uh, Yasuaki uh, Shimizu. Uh, I'll show the album at some point, but um, not today, though. He did that album with has that the red cover with the uh, the black hat on it. He does a lot of uh, Japanese uh, TV jingles, that sort of thing. Um, big synth guy, early experimental uh, new age kind of stuff. It's on the the Better Days label. Yeah, it's a very uh, funky uh, aesthetic here, but this is uh, definitely a falls into fusion. So uh, Kazumi Watanabe. Uh, Famous guitarist in Japan, and yeah, as I said, Yasuaki uh, Shimizu is a uh, big synth guy. So again, very funky looking uh, insert. But yeah, definitely not a punk album. It's very, very fusion. It's maybe uh, like proto city pop, I suppose. But 
that's your thing. This is a really good album. Uh, and it's relatively cheap in Japan anyway. So that's very minty copy. I think I paid less than 10 bucks on it. Uh, this one's been shown a few times. Uh, falls into that uh, kind of progressive, folky vibe. Very good. Uh, contribution, our second contribution by Sean Phillips. Um, yeah, I paid like four bucks for this. Very, very, very clean copy. Happy to find it. Uh, worth a listen if you haven't already. Some people have shown this a lot. I uh, did, uh, right after I got this, I found the um, one right before this contribution. Uh, so I think he changed the labels uh, to A. This is A&M. You know, I guess at the time was doing a lot of uh, kind of bulky stuff. Original pin stuff. This is like a repress. Maybe second pressing US, I believe. But um, yeah. So singer, songwriter, folky, folk rock, a little proggy at times, I think. Um, but yeah. Fun stuff. I did pick up his the one right before this when it's first AM, which is contribution. It has a much cooler looking cover on it. Uh, haven't given it a listen yet, but uh, maybe next week. So worth a, you know, worth a shot. I think I paid like four bucks. Pretty minty copy. Not in high demand. I think they had two copies at the record shop. And another one uh, from the some of the big 50 cent piles I picked up recently. Very, uh, very clean uh, Jim Croce? Croce? I don't know. I think it's Croce. I got a name. Title track, of course. Uh, very, very good. I also have some of like desktop stuff. Pick them up when I see them. But hard finding the clean copies. This one's really clean. Uh, what's the other? I'll have to say I love you in a song. It's quite got a lot of airplay. I know you always saw on the radio. But yeah, you, you see his stuff. It's really good. Singer songwriter. Okay, Here, still in the shrinks. So again, it's gonna be glary no matter what. Uh, Black Keys, uh, what's it called? Chula Homa. <coughs> Excuse me. So it's all uh, Junior Kimbo uh, covers. I guess uh, it's about 10 years old, I think. This is an original pressing, but I, I think it's still, they still have it in print. There's like a repress maybe years ago. So there we are. Got some liner notes from. Uh, Uh, I don't know. Well, I thought it was on the Niners. I think it's actually a recording at the end of the record uh, from Junior Kimbrough's uh, wife thanking them for uh, doing such a good job, blah, blah, blah. I heard the... Yeah, it's kind of a fun album. So, a little different, a little bit different from their usual stuff. Uh, one of their strongest albums, I'd say. So, Junior Kimbrough being the, uh, the blues guy. I do need to pick up some of his stuff on... Um, on Fat Possum as well, just like Junior Kimbo. So, yep, Fat Possum. So, that's worth a listen. Chula Homa. Here's another uh, 50 cent find recently. Still in the shrink. So, Sitar Music of India. National, India National Sitar Ensemble. Goes into, uh, yeah, very, very dated <laughs> notes there. Yeah, they get into the gray areas. Uh, not very PC, I guess. Um, but on Everest Records. Yeah, but I don't know if I'd go out of my way to sort of seek this one out. But it's, if you see it, it it's worth a few bucks. It's probably going to be a bargain bin album. But uh, yeah, it's pretty much what it sounds like. It's a couple uh, different arrangements from different parts of India. Um, it goes into like the history of Indian music, how it's different regions have different traditions. So, yeah, it probably uh, came out when uh, George Harrison was getting into his uh, sitar stuff. This is a stereo copy. Uh, forget, it doesn't say the year on here, but I think on Discogs it was mid-60s. So, yeah, it would have been about the time that uh, George Harrison was experimenting and everyone else is getting into it. It's an interesting listen. It's definitely one I'll put on again. It's a lot of fun. Worth a few bucks if you see it. Yeah, another uh, cheapo find. <laughs> that, uh, 
I don't know if I can get his regular elbows, but greatest hits, yeah, basically only had two. Uh, Gary Puckett and the uh, Union Gap. So 60 pop, um, you know, the two main songs on here, Woman, Woman, and Young Girl. So probably doesn't, yeah, kind of creepy vibe on there. Uh, probably doesn't play as well nowadays as it did back then. Even. Yeah, so, but yeah, it was, it was definitely worth the 50 cents. Very clean copy. Uh, if you, yeah, if you see this on the cheap, it's probably worth it for those two songs or, or just buy the singles. So, yeah, you know that. And yep, yeah, last album in the stack. Uh, this is uh, Spit Boy. This is one, uh, I think it's maybe their second album. Um, I figured out later. I was, I was like, I know this album. I know this album. Yeah, but there's a compilation I think that has this album and another album on it on CD. Uh, this, so I used to have that. I'm pretty sure I bought it from the band back in the '90s. But uh, Ebulation. Uh, so I think they're Southern um uh, Southern California maybe. Was that San Francisco? Okay, maybe they're a San Francisco band. But yeah, political hardcore uh, '90s. Yeah, same stuff everyone complains about nowadays. Nothing's changed. Oops, I don't know if I can show that. But uh, yeah, it has a full-on booklet with all this like, political manifesto type stuff. Uh, and interestingly, it's translated into Spanish. It, the lyrics are translated into Spanish. And, this is a, yeah, you can, oops, yeah, yeah, you can find this. Uh, not terribly expensive, I think. Good album. Who Self Revealed is the album title, I believe. Yep. Uh, yeah, political hardcore. Yeah, I was just, uh, I think uh, Vinyl Richie was talking about political hardcore. Yeah, so it doesn't always date well. <laughs> but it, yeah, it's a fun listen. It's a good album. So, uh, yeah, ooh, getting, getting long in the tooth here. So, yeah. So um, I'll cut it short because, yeah, I, I don't like it when videos get this long myself because I never had the time to do stuff. So hopefully I uh, didn't ramble too much here. So, yeah, everyone have a hope you had a great um, Labor Day weekend if you're in the States. And, well, welcome back to work if you're in the rest of the world. So, yeah, Jeff signing out. Have a good one. And, uh, yeah, see you next week.